ξεκίνεται στο κήπεδο, πλησιάζει την περιοχή και... Κατέβασε και εσύ το Beton Alpha app και μην χάσεις ούτε ένα γκολ. Beton Alpha. Ανεβήκαμε κατηγορία. Edo! We can start this podcast in a positive light. We can do it with a smile on our faces. No one can fucking cap the beginning of this stream and put it on Facebook laughing at the hockey as we're called. They can't do it because we fucking got a victory today. Welcome to No Chofters, powered by Bet on Alpha, the best betting company in Cyprus, hands down. Yeah. I'm still. I've got Mr. Roy here. How are you doing, young man? Hello, I feel I'm good. I'm good. Um, all, I know good. you're good because you got your cap backwards. That's how I know you're good. And the and the white one as well. Team. See, you got the white one now. You got the black one. You got more than me. You're you're more cho- more, more no chocolates <laughs> merch up than I am, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how the devil have you been? I've been okay because it's a really busy period at work. Uh, just managed to come on, on time. Actually, it's the earliest uh, I came back home uh, these last 10 days, let's say. So, yeah, just in time to watch the game. Always a lot more pleasant to talk uh, after a victory, even though I always say that um, the result is what counts the most but you should always uh, evaluate what you've done right or wrong in all honesty i think we've played against the uh, apollo team which uh, similar to us uh, has quite a lot of problems um generally at home we tend to perform a, a little bit better than uh, the away games our records a lot better uh, I'm going to agree with you that, uh, you know, we, we exchanged some messages and we were quite confident that we're going to win the game today. Uh, you wrote it as well. Uh, I, I didn't say it or write it, but I felt it. I felt quite confident that we we're going to win. But at the end of the day, I don't think it uh, really changes the, the bigger picture um, of our team. We saw a different formation again today. Uh, the experimenting continues, but we'll get into that with more detail. Uh, Sel Leon. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Do don't bust doing Gwendan. I'm gonna let you start, and uh, you know, let's uh, talk about the starting lineup. How you how you saw the game? Let me. Even okay. though I, I I know most of the things because we were exchanging messages throughout the game, but you know, for mm-hmm. for the people, you know waiting to hear what we have to say. Yeah, absolutely. So for those cheers, of you guys. who... Cheers. There you go. So for those of you who watch the uh, This Is Mappa podcast that we do, uh, the show the other day, we were discussing Apollon's victory uh, against Paralimni. And what we noticed from that was Hamas and um, Alessami were on the left-hand side. Okay, so Alessami was left back, Hamas was left wing. Bitsa was in a number 10 role. He was drifting. So they didn't really have a specific outlet going through the middle. Zandin was on the bench. Um, they didn't have an out-and-out right winger. So there was a lot of emphasis on Mavriaz yeah. going forward. Zandin was the playing. Watch. Yeah, no, but against Baralimni. Ah, sorry. Ah, sorry. Okay. Yes. But tonight, what we had was practically... A, it, it wasn't the same lineup. Obviously, as you mentioned, Zandin was playing, but as a number 10... And I, I understand that the reason why they played him as a 10, because they know that the lines between our centre-backs and our central midfielders, they're quite deep, they're quite long. So uh-huh. he was going to get a lot of time on the ball or perhaps a lot more joy on the ball. But their right-hand side was very, very brittle. It was only Mavrias making runs uh, on that right-hand side. Bitau, again, was dropping into those wide areas. They didn't have an outlet through the middle. They didn't have a presence through the middle up front. Hamas and um, Alessami had a lot of joy on that left-hand side. So in the WhatsApp group prior to the game, I said, look, if they go with those two on their left-hand side, 
we need to get at them on their right hand side. Yeah. And lo and behold, our first attack goal scorer was Bruno, a guy that played on our left hand side that was moving in central. And to be honest, the first 20 minutes, I got no problems with the way that we played. It was very similar to the, the Ajax game. We started on the front foot. We got an early goal. And once we scored that goal, all right, I wouldn't say we took the foot off the gas, but we invited pressure. But as I was saying before, they didn't have an outlet. A lot of the time when the ball was on their left-hand side, because that was their main area of strength, they had four players. They had Zrandi dropping that area, had Alessami, you had Hamas, and you had who's the other? Resio. There were the four players in that area that were getting through us. But again, you're getting through us, but there's nothing central. And I was saying to you guys at halftime, watch them bring on Hendi or Dingini and they're going to switch systems and be more potent uh, up front. But to be honest, up until half time, I didn't really see them causing us any problems. There was one uh, challenge from Gitsa, from Bita. They had a few shots. Randy had a shot. But there was nothing heart in mouth kind of uh, thing. Um, Defensively, we were good. I like Adam Lang's new haircut. It reminds me of Dan in the 90s, proper US Marine style, and he played like a fucking Marine tonight. Um, middle of the park, Bashiru again, 10 out of 10 performance. I, I, I can't fault him whatsoever. Gusso had a couple of moments which I got a little bit pissed off about. His final ball was a bit poor, but he made up for it with, with the second goal, which we're going to go into later. But in terms of our lineup, Roy, I didn't see any surprises. And by that, I mean, I fully expected Lesiak to be on the bench after that performance. Um, I don't think he could argue with being on the bench. Um, going two up front, albeit both of our front men playing more like the Garia more than anything. Yeah. It was a, the yeah. bit of a surprise for me. But it was a system that I expected. And the system you expected the system. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Okay. I, I knew he had to switch things up. And the reason why I say this is because against Ayek, while the 4 2 3 1 was working for a quarter of the game, when we were going getting forward, there weren't enough bodies in the box. And you can't just rely on cutting to, to, to be the, the, the focal point because he likes to drop deep. And as we saw today, he effectively played as a number nine up until I'd say the half hour mark. And then he and Hooper switched. So you'd see Hooper as a number nine and, and Karim as a 10, which looks like he's more comfortable doing, being that Sheringham kind of player. Do you know what I mean? Right. That Cantona yeah. kind of role where he drops deep and plays anywhere. He's not yeah. your number nine. But again, first half, we go in comfortable. Talk to me about the lineup when you first saw it, Philip. Okay. Uh, for me, again... I don't. Uh, there's no surprises in what sense. So the the lineup. Um, I was happy to see Kitso start the game. Uh, obviously, Psalti was going to start because Matthews was uh, injured. The duo at the back. He's trying maybe to. I don't know. Keep Miletic and Lang as a as his duo. Uh, he's insisting in that duo, even though a but few that's weeks what we ago. Were saying. Yeah. Thank you. He was Thank insisting, you. he was playing you stand, leaving Adam out a lot, but now it seems you switched that. Um, I'm going to repeat what I say, and I'm going to repeat it after a, a game where the defenders weren't that bad, the, the central duo. I want to see more of Panayodu. I don't know why Panayodu has disappeared. He doesn't deserve this, but uh, in fairness, they had a decent game, both of them. Uh, middle of the park, I'm not going to say I was shocked to see Hambo stay out, but maybe a little bit surprised. Um, okay, Kusu and, and uh, Bashiru, I think they didn't work together as a team. Uh, Bash was, they, they worked more individually rather than as a duo in the in the midfield, if that makes sense. Yeah, but bro, there's there something that I said in the WhatsApp group. When Roberge or Jovanovic had the ball uh, at centre-back, no one was pressing them, right? Yeah. It was only when Spoljaric got the ball in front of them, the only came, person that yeah. pressed was Bash. Yeah. Bash was the only one that pressed. So perhaps that, that was the idea. Because yeah. let's get it right. Gusu and Bash are that protection in front of the two centre-backs. 
they're, they're that protection. And I think while, as I said, I don't think that Gusus is made for these derby games, he didn't have a bad game. He didn't have a bad game. Um, that being said, he did his job. So I can't really... Do you know what I mean? No, what I'm saying is that they didn't work as a as a duo, maybe because they've got... The, the, the Both of them are more like a six. Exarca Barabano. They are the, okay, Bash, I think, can, can play the role of a number eight or a box-to-box. Uh, well, look how many times they played and, with each other. Look how many times they played with each other. I don't think it's that many, bruv. No. Think yeah. about it. Bash okay. has been here for close. To, yeah, he's been here for a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, but he's also yeah, been but, out for over a year. Yeah. So okay, but I'm not. I'm. I can understand the reasons why, but what I'm saying is okay. They work more individually rather than as a couple. I think. Um. Stafftera, Loizos, Medon, Bruno, again, decent game from both of them. Uh, I think Bruno was exceptional, man. Yeah. I think it was exceptional. Forget the goal. I think his yeah. work rate was brilliant. And the fact that there was one point in the game where Zrandi broke through and he tracked him the whole fucking way and nicked the ball off him. I'm like... Yeah, this is the energy and this is the intensity that we want to see. And I think that's the key word, intensity. We saw that tonight. Something that yeah. we've lacked all season. The intensity, the shit housing, the fight, the aggression. That was brilliant. And as you see at the bottom, they worked harder than Santa's elves. That's that's what I believe anyway. Um, yeah. Um, the person I'm, who is probably... My MVP of the game is Kareem. Kareem, like you said, played in a more free role. And I think having two up top helped him as well to bring out the best of him. Uh, You're going with him we... as your MVP? Kareem. Kareem and Psalti for me are the two. Yeah. Psalti's my oh. guy, man. Today he was, he was Psalti, man possessed. He, he deserves a, a lot of credit because... He's never going to be a fan's favorite. He. What are you talking year, about? He's John Cena. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, but uh, you you know what I'm saying. You know, sometimes. Uh, yeah, I know, man. But the thing is, that it's, it's always got to be the glamorous players that is a fan favorite. But I tell you what, Sati today, from minute one to the time he went off, right, he was a fucking gladiator. He yeah. took kicks left, right, and center. He was knocked down to the ground. He had someone stepped on his head at one point, I think. And for him to continue, he didn't bitch. He came, he came off the pitch a couple of times to get treatment, came back on, and he got a fucking assist. And I'll tell you what, that run that he made, he made it from fucking his own half, bro. Like, he started, yeah. started from his own half. Yeah, so, yeah, um, for me, Paris and uh, Kareem uh, are my MVPs of the of tonight's game. And uh, I think I'm going to give it to, to Paris. Uh, because oh, now you're league. giving it to him. <laughs> no, I said I said Karim and Paris. I was trying okay. to describe between the two okay. of them. Okay. Yeah, but I okay. think I'm gonna give it to Paris for the reasons you explained, and uh, yeah, so Paris is a uh, very solid. Uh, okay, I don't, I, I don't want to. Obviously, I'm, I'm happy with the win. Uh, the performance at time was good. We saw more intensity. We saw a bit more logic. In the game, but let's not forget. It's I'm not going to say Abolon is 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 this of the same caliber of uh, as Olympiagos or Carniodisa or Chloraga that we played the other day. But Abolon is also a team that faces a lot of problems. They're not in the they don't have the right mindset. I think psychologically they're not doing very well. They're not a team that creates a lot. So. Even though it's it's good that we've won and we're back in the top six, we're on fifth position currently, same points with Apollon. Obviously, Apollon's got a game in hand with AL. But, you know, uh, we're, we're still fifth, sixth, and uh, it doesn't... Today's win doesn't, you know, isn't enough to change the general idea that we have of this team, which is th their instability at times. But if you isolate the game, I believe, okay, it was it was a good win. 
But you have to build. Well, I, think, I think it's been our best. I think it's it's been our best league performance this season overall. Possibly, possibly our best yes. league performance but, overall. But but I um I don't rate Abolon, and and I said I I wrote something on the WhatsApp group as well. I think today was a battle between probably two of the weakest managers in the league. Yeah, I know. I get it, man. I get it. Look, my, Abolon's head coach has only been there for a cup of coffee. He's only been there a few weeks, right? And he's not a, an experienced head coach. He, he was promoted from the from the under twenty ones, if I'm not mistaken, on Magridis, right? Yeah. So he hasn't he hasn't been there for for long. But what I will say, right, is um, look when I when I saw Abolon's lineup, I was a little bit confused because when I saw Dingini. Dabo and Hendy on the bench. They're three central strikers. Bita isn't a centre forward. He's, he's effectively a Degadi. He isn't a centre forward, right? For them not to play any of them against our two centre backs, who we've said for weeks cannot deal with crosses in the box. You're thinking two big guys up front. Give them problems. Get the ball out wide. Pop it in the box. You got the wide men to do it. Yeah. And they didn't do it. They didn't select them. And, and for me, the moment I saw that lineup, I thought, yeah, we're going to win this one. Unless they bring them on second half and really go at us, which when they brought in Hendy and Var, they played ten yards further up the field. They played with more speed, they, you know, one more, more two touch and then touch it, uh, passing, so to speak. You know, none of this dwelling on the ball for too much. Mavria has got the ball out wide a lot and, and crossed it in the box. But apart from one save from Uzoha, one nil from the set piece, which was a near post header. Yeah. They didn't really cause us any problems. When we got the second goal, there was that chance where they, it was crossed across the face of the box and then Uzoz got a touch and Dingini was, was sliding yeah. in. It went in front of him. But again, they didn't cause us any problems. But I'll tell you what, this isn't a knock on Abolon. This is praising us defensively because we got bodies back in numbers. Our wide men were tracking runners right? The overlap was on at some point, but then we'd stop it. So there weren't occasions, or should I say, there weren't many occasions where they got in behind us in wide areas because the wingers were doing the, the tracking, right? Yeah. And what I will say, again, another thing that I noticed, when we were defending corners, there were three, in fact, four occasions where we had four defenders across the six-yard box, yeah, marking zonally, and we had two players on either stick, yeah, so we had one on the front stick and one on the back stick, right? So it was Bash on one post and Gitz on the other post. Because yeah. we've been conceding yeah. goals from corners, right? Because we had no one on the fucking sticks. But here we go. Get the man on the stick. When the ball is delivered, you, you, you know, when you, you clear your lines, you run out, right? The only gripe I will have, the only moan I will have about today is we weren't winning uh, second balls. That's the main problem I had today because we'd, we'd clear our lines and there'd be no one on the end of a second ball and then it'd just be recycled from them. It happened a few times in the first half, right? But in all fairness, we exploited them in areas that they were weak. And while we didn't create many opportunities, I think apart from Hooper's shot that was saved, I can't remember their goalkeeper having, the midfielder having much to do. That being said, the, the, the two or three main chances we scored, okay, fair enough, Gagel had a chance at the end, which he should have scored, in my opinion. Um, but he, I don't know what he was thinking. I think that was a I think he got confused with, with Bruno. Bruno confused him there a little bit. You know, they were, I don't know what it was. Well, no, because I, I think Bruno Bruno timed, timed the pass extremely well. He timed it very well because he had options. And the, the main option, the, the outlet was Gagel to the left of him. And he played it. But this is me not being critical of Gagel. What I will say about him is, I think I said it before, he's an instinctive striker. And by that, I mean, if you give him time to think with the ball, yeah. more often than not, he forces lines. Yeah. Yeah. But give him half a chance or a split second to think, he's putting that yeah. ball away. Look at all the goals that he scored for us, especially the one today. Ball's whipped in from Sabdi. He's only had half a chance. He hasn't smashed it, whatever. He's just put it in the, in, in the back of the net. So I can't, you know, really shit on the kid too much, you know. And as I said before in the, in the WhatsApp group at half time, don't be surprised if he comes on for either Hooper or or um, Paddy because he gives you the he gives you the legs. And yeah. look, Roberge is 35, 36, however old he is. He ain't got legs, right? Yeah. 
You saw him tra- you saw him attempting to track Guggle. He didn't tra- he couldn't track him. Because yeah. by the time he noticed the ball going out wide, Guggle's already in the box. Mm-hmm. So look, I think overall it was a fantastic performance when you talk man for man. It was brilliant. There's a few little stages where, all right, they threatened us, but it wasn't heart in mouth kind of moment. They had a couple of shots from Saha outside the box, which were shut down or blocked out wide, uh, blocked out wide for a corner. So, again, man, as I said, it was it was a much more uh, intense performance. We got we defended well in numbers. All right, if I want to have another gripe, perhaps we didn't get bodies forward in numbers. But again, like you know, the, the chances that we created, they were open chances. So it's not as if like we relied on half chances. The two goals that we scored were clear. 1v1 situations. Yeah. So we created, I mean, I haven't heard what the what the coach has said in his press conference. I was watching the, the Abolon coach and he was getting... Yeah, I was watching him as well, but then we had to start the live. So yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, Dax, what do you expect? Um... <laughs> exactly. And do you know what? They asked him, what about uh, Medagrafes? What about signings? And he's like, well, two or three signings ain't going to change nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's something uh, that's going to... Yeah, we, I'm I'm curious to see tomorrow on Total Green when we're going to have Simos Tarabulus. This what he's going to say about stuff like well, that. But yeah, it, that res, that result has made his life a whole lot easier, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, it depends. Uh, let's not get carried away. That's what I'm trying to say. I think I I think that, that there are definitely a lot more positives than negatives when it comes to this game. But again. That's only if you isolate today's game. If you see the greater picture, we're still a lot far away from uh, our our targets and we've got a lot of teams uh, in front of us and uh, we need to have uh, a run, you know, so we can start considering something more than uh, the top six. But yeah, Mm -hmm. I think we started off the game uh, the early goal, which was a really nice goal as well, if we have to talk about it, was a, a really nice goal. Like I liked uh, the whole build up to the to the play, the way Hooper uh, let the ball, you know, roll to, to I mean, Bruno. Yeah. yeah, the Bruno's finish, uh, top corner, top pins, you know, nice goal. I think that didn't uh, help Abolon, you know, that it gave us a, a, a little bit of more psychology. And uh, it confused Apollon a little bit more. But mm-hmm. I think after the 20th minute, they, they started playing a bit further up. And um, it was strange because at halftime, I haven't seen the statistics at full time, but at halftime, we had one shot on goal, uh, one attempt to roll, one shot on goal, so only one goal. But the impression you had was that and Apollon had three and one, one on target. Mm-hmm. But it didn't seem like, you know, Abolon was the better team. It was, we were a lot better the first 20 minutes, I think. And then from the 20th minute onwards, maybe Abolon held the possession, but they weren't really a threat to, to us. We, we we kept them quite comfortably. Well, they, they didn't pose a threat because they didn't have anyone up front. There you go. Um, the, the second half, as you said, you know, you, you expected that you're going to see some changes, uh, both from Abolon and our team as well. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, I think the second half as well, we, we dealt with it quite comfortably. I think, uh, obviously he, he was, uh, Ferreira was going to put some other players, but then we got the second goal. So he changed his opinion and, uh, I think we kept the Epcazamen the Nigi quite comfortably, like you said, other than the save that uh, Francis had to make Medo Jeff Hajan, Jamebudi, Epkan, Jaguam Yafasim where where Digini slid and, and but you know I, I think maybe Francis put his fingers to it as well, you know, there. I, I thought yeah, Francis was, he, he diverted it, he diverted it away. Yeah. In fact, there was a save he made from Roberge's header which is a free yeah. header from the corner, which Psati should have been picking him up. But again, if that went past Uzoho, we, we had a man on the line. We yeah. A man on the stick. So. Yeah. And uh, I think Francis had a really good game as well. The yeah. way he, he, I think he was the leader of the back of the, of the defense today, Francis. Uh, yeah. But what I will say, Francis, please, bruv, work on your kicking. Work on your kicking. <laughs> 
bro, like <laughs> when he gets the boy's feet, I'm thinking, oh, where's this gonna go? <laughs> where's it yeah. gonna go? And Daxi, man, is what it Although, is. Although, no, I'm gonna say because you know, today, today for me, another very important uh, occasion is that uh, my favorite player was, was back on the bench, Fabiano. You know, so uh, Fra Francis was was quite good for us since uh, Fabi got injured. So you know, um, he's, he's done a really good job, Francis. And uh, okay. But it was a important. It's very important that Fabi is back as well. So overall, you know, if I have to say a few things about today's game, uh, is that it seemed to me that uh, maybe the the job and the talk in the dressing room showed a little bit today. They seem to learn from their mistakes. What you said about the set pieces having players on the stick, keeping the lines, the intensity, the shit housing. You, you could see at points that they wanted it more. Okay, obviously we're not there. We're not, we can't expect, you know, to go from an average or below average performance to start playing, you know, football, which is, you know, uh, a number. You could say, uh, Allah, we did see some good things overall, but yeah. like I said, it doesn't change the overall um, impression of uh, of the team, and definitely it it doesn't change uh, what should be done on all levels. Still, Omonia, this is what I believe. Mm. Well, before we carry on, I just want to pick up how how Stuart, right? He is. Living in Cyprus, Fred Anos, right? He uh, runs a podcast called The Sheffield United Way. It's a fantastic okay. podcast, fantastic guests. And today he went to a Cypriot third division game between Abeb and Abea. Okay. Abea across the Rio, Abeb with Sigiad. Bravo. There you go. And that is dedication, man. He lives in Cyprus and he goes to a third division game. Big him up, man. Come on. Come on. Um, uh, big, what, there's, big there's, there's something wait, wait, there's, there's uh, and Andy Papa Stavri out, Tarapuluz is out, Lior is out, <laughs> yeah, the wall out, <laughs> yeah, the wall out. <laughs> Good night, any extra my problem, I call it standing. Well, look, um, this, this video footage is actually, I took it from my phone because I haven't downloaded it on the fucking um, what's it called. On a from thing prime tell, but this is the goal, yeah. That's a, as you can see, it's from my television screen, right? Mm -hmm. But what I want to say, look at Gusso, he's he's received the ball from Barker, yeah. So yeah. Barker's, yeah, and look at this one touch pass. I mean, that's brilliant, man. Look at that, yeah, fantastic. Look, I've, I've been shitting on him, right? And I'll be the first to admit that ball. It's fucking sexy, man. I mean, look at that. It One is, touch. It is, it is, it is. It is that is it perfect, is. man. It's perfect. So I'll give Gusu his flowers, man. Yeah, I'll give him his sure. flowers. He deserves that. And I'll tell you what now, another thing. Barker, Barker is starting to impress me a bit as well. Because let's get it right. Wasn't it his uh, his quick thinking against um, Kloraga, which played Lesiax in? So he's had a couple of influential moments, shall we say. I'm not getting on this bandwagon that he's going to be the next fucking, you know, Nunasis, relax, okay? But I'm giving players their flowers because I can't shit on anyone after a victory. I can't. I really can't. Because we've been complaining about victories. We've been complaining about, you know, not winning games. We've been complaining about the game against Ajax, whatever. All right, Abolon ain't you know, a, 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 a special team, right? In fact, I think only Anortosi are worse than them at the moment. You could you could say Ayel, but at least Ayel won their last game, you know? So, look, it, it's a victory. If we'd have, it, it goes back to what I said, it's a lose-lose situation. If we'd have lost the game, Nice would have been out. We've won the game, and people are messaging me saying it should have been four. Well, 
I don't care. Like I keep saying, yeah? Give me 20, 25, 26, one nil victories a season. I don't give a shit. Don't care. Yeah, but you don't see that. That's what I'm saying. That over, I'm, I'm not shitting off. No, on the I agree. We don't see that, which is why we're, we're not top. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we need to. We need to have uh, more stability. We need to see more of that. We have to start winning away from home. I mean, eight games, uh, four points out of possible twenty-four points. We've got. We've got four points away from home. Uh, that's something we we need to see. Um, with Ferreira, okay, this was the fourth derby game uh, we played against. Oi, very bene. Beksan me a Northosin, Arin, Apoel, Ike, Chapolon. Okay, we won a Northosin, drew with Aris, lost to Apoel, Ike, and we won a Bolon. But yeah, we we need to see a lot more stability. And like I always say, the result is what counts the most. But at the same time, you have to see what we're doing right or wrong, you know? Hello, Rodri. Mr. I told you so. You'd love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, mate, I, I'm I'm thrilled with the, with the performance overall. Um, I made a shit ton of notes as well. I actually made a shit ton of notes. Um, but again, I, I can't, I can't sit here and say like, ah, oh, this one didn't play well. This one didn't play well. Blah 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 blah. You know, as I said, it's it's an ugly win. Um, but I, I don't care. I really don't care. We needed this win. We we absolutely needed it. Just just for the confidence and something to go into the the Christmas break. You know, we needed it. And well, look, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. A, a win is all. I, I started the pot saying that it's always a lot more pleasant talking after we win a game, no yeah. matter what. You know, it's the three points uh, count the most. You know, but at the end of the day, like we said, even when we won the cup, we said it shouldn't let it. Number one, Bulalije or Chris Pay over the cracks. The paper over the cracks. You know. Uh, we need a lot more stability. We need a lot of intensity. We need uh, the manager needs to convince us that he has a lot more potential um, to build the team from the beginning and uh, have what it takes. The Domedalon do Prodasli D. We need to see players show that they care a lot more, you know, and uh, we need a lot more than what we saw today. And the game today is. It, it is what it is, you know. I mean, okay, you're gonna tell me you're gonna complain when you lose and you're gonna complain when you win. No, that's not what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, you have to see who who you got up against, who you are against, who you're playing against with. So overall, we probably na. Να βελτιωθούμε, πρέπει να βελτιωθούμε, δηλαδή εν αλλάσσει έναν παιχνίδι τη γενική εικόνα της ομάδας, εν τον πουλαλό. Ε, του τον πουλαλεί ο, ο Ιάννης, εντάξει. Okay. Ε, ε, Βάρτα εσύ τα μηνύματα τώρα, αφού μιλώ εγώ. Ε, <laughs> ε, ε, okay, one thing I wanted to ask you, I think we, we, we've touched it a little bit in previous uh, pods. Um, I don't know. I just mean I don't want to be better. Oh, Yannick, now that the vast register on a pro for his own just all the famata apply in a better was now what he been okay. You said that we touched on something. What did we touch on? <laughs> no, 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 yeah. I was going to say about what do you think can change uh, in the transfer window in January? Well, we certainly need a centre back. Certainly need a centre back. Yeah. Um, but I've been saying this for for weeks, and we definitely need a left footed centre back. And I know people are going to say Pana, 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 but you know he's still young. He's still young, and while he's a very good player, I don't know why he's not playing. I really can't put my finger on it. I really can't. I, I don't know what he's done wrong. I don't know if there's something that the manager has seen in training that maybe thinks that he's 
he's not ready to play in this team or this style. I, I really don't know. I really don't know, but I we desperately need a centre back. That is for starters. Okay. As for other areas of the pitch, again, difficult for me to say because Zaha is still recovering. Um, he's had a very, very difficult injury and a lot of people have got on his back. But when this lad has been carrying an injury for close to a year, an injury that keeps reoccurring, it isn't his fault. But fortunately, he's getting the right rehabilitation now. And hopefully, he'll return and, and be the player that we think, or you know, us as a pod think, he can he can really make an impact on this club. Because I think as, as a winger, he's the most tr traditional winger we have. Him and Barker are the two traditional wingers we have. Right? And by traditional winger, I mean a guy that hugs the touchline, runs at fullbacks. Yeah, you could say that Bruno and Lois will do but they're very inverted. They like to play more central when they're on the ball. I've, I I don't see Loizu hugging the touchline every single minute of the game. He's always looking to run inside or whatever. And while, yeah, you could say if you're a traditional winger, it's predictable because you're only running, you know, up and down the pitch. When you've got that outlet, when you've got players that play the ball between the centre-back and the full-back, you need that runner. And I think he's got the ability to beat a man. I think yeah. he does. So again, I, I don't want to pin our hopes on Zaha because it's not fair on the on the guy, and it's it's being unrealistic as well. But he's a good option to have. So would I want another winger for now? Probably not. But we definitely need a guy that can score goals, man. We definitely need the centre forward. And again, this isn't a knock on Hooper. This isn't a knock on Gaggle. But Tim Matavs, you know, we brought him on for the last five minutes or ten minutes against Ajax, and all we were doing is lumping the ball long to him. Now, it's not his fault that he's not playing. I can't give him stick for not playing. But we need a guy that can score us goals. That being said, in this league, can you think of three guys that can get you 10, 15 goals a season in the Prada Klima? Can you, can you think of that? Listen, we, we spoke about this uh, on many occasions. I, I think this is... Uh, worldwide, it doesn't... It, it's not... Uh, something to do with uh, just the Cypriot League. Obviously, no, there's... it isn't. It isn't. And this is something that my, my friend Steve said on a, a podcast I do with him. He says, it's probably because a lot of teams, especially at academy level, they play 4-2-3-1. So you don't need more than one centre forward to play every game. So what you're doing, you're developing midfielders, you're developing wingers, but you're not developing strikers. And it's no yeah. coincidence that if you look throughout the world, who is the, the best out-and-out -out number nine at the moment? You can say... Harry Kane, although he's more like a 10 now. Lewandowski, well, mm. you know, he's, he's losing it a little bit after that fucking World Cup. Holland. So in terms of the centre-forward, Mbappe is in the centre-forward, clearly. So anyway. Mitro, Mitrovic, Vlahovic. Mitrovic, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's but not yeah. like the late 90s where you can think of Batistuta and Ronaldo. Every team, I think, I'm going to do this. 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 Over a month or so, I think he, he got injured when, when he played against us. Was it was it that game? Yo, when... say, say again, who? Zairo from Paphos. Zairo. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, he, he's the only I think he's got 10 goals now and he was out uh, yeah. he was out injured. But look at like the look at Triskovsky or look at you know Apollon hasn't got a striker that scores goals. Anorthos, he hasn't got a striker that scores goals. Abuel hasn't got a striker that scores goals. Omonia hasn't got a striker that scores goals. So, uh, overall, I, I don't know how easy it is to find uh, a player in January that's going to make the difference and, and have the... To have called Derman Bulalume and Bollest Forest. Maybe you know, he's going to get to the end εγώ πιστεύω ότι θέλουμε οπωσδήποτε center back, θέλουμε, θέλουμε οπωσδήποτε winger. Uh, I don't disagree ότι χρειαζόμαστε ένα center for, απλά uh, 
μετά τον Παναγιό του, ε, θεωρώ ότι ο που αδικείται παραπάνω ενώ, ενώ κακουλής. Και ο κακουλής όποτε μπαίνει, πάλι προσπαθεί, βάλει γκολ, ε, μες στις φάσεις, ε, έχει ταχύτητα, έχει το πρέσ, ε, έχει φορές που τον έβαλαμε να παίζει και φτερό, αντί να παίζει σαν σέντερφορ. Αλλά <laughs> πράγμα, <laughs> πράγμα, <laughs> πρέπει, πρέπει να δούμε και ο προπονητής μας τι έχει υπόψη του, δηλαδή ποιο σύστημα θέλει να παίζει. Δηλαδή ακόμα και σήμερα γυρίσαμε και το formation, δηλαδή πάλι πήραμε και σήμερα ας πούμε. Ε, αλλά ναι, γεν, γενικά ε, χρειάζονται παίχτες. Ε, να συμφωνήσω με κάτι που είπε ο, ο Μακρύδης, ο προπονητής του Απόλλωνα, ότι δεν είναι θέμα αυτό τριών παιχτών, ας πούμε, για να αλλάξει η γενική εικόνα. Και, και πάντα η μεταγραφική του Γενάρη εντιαμε όχι για να μπορείς να χτίσεις ξανά την ομάδα, αλλά να διορθώσεις κάποιες αδυναμίες που μπορεί να έχεις. Και overall, the, our team is, is average or below average. You remember we were exchanging messages on the WhatsApp group and... Uh, εδώ σαν ευαθμολογίες στους παίχτες, ας πούμε, και στους νέους που είστε ας είναι και... Δηλαδή, realistically, most of the players are, are either average or below average. So, I don't know how it is, easy it is to find a player in January. Yeah, but the thing is, bro, yeah, I'm not trying to be funny, right? But I'm not trying to be funny, but average squads can be successful if they play to their strengths. No disrespect, but... That Greece Euro 2004 squad says it all, yeah. does it not? Were there any world class players? Were there any players that you could turn around and say, "Yeah, you know, he'd he'd be lethal in Serie A or the Premier League or wherever"? None of them. Yeah, but we don't I'm have not, not... We, we don't have the character. We don't have the identity. We don't have. I agree. I agree, and I've said it many times on the pod that the. The 11 who, who together play the best, I, I prefer them to the 11 best players. But what does that mean? <laughs> what does know. that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I do agree with what you're saying that you know an average team. But that means that you have to to be. If, for example, you're an average team of like a six and a half, a seven, you have to play that every week in, week out. We play. Seven and a half, eight. Then we play three, four. You know, and then the average goes to. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's no, there's no consistency in the lineups either. Yeah, yeah. No, the system, no, the lineups, no, the performances of players. Well, well, the system today for me was was brilliant. I think anyway, in terms of the how they worked, because that for, listen. So the different, the main difference for um, today, as opposed to any other game this season, barring United away from home, was the work rate. No. It was the work rate, and again, I don't, I don't want to shit on these players, but effort is a given, right? Tracking runners, that's standard. Clearing your lines, winning the second ball, it's standard. Textbook yeah? things. Precisely, if you were going to write a handbook, football for dummies. These things will be in there. That that's what it is, bro. Honestly, that'll be it. Oi, my guy. Is that is that Ben? Or is that Jason? Ah, come on, my guy. Um, so look, it, it's a given. Effort is a given, right? So do a watch along tomorrow, right? Hey, if if I was gonna do that, I'd get people calling me from the club saying, "Please stop your stream. <laughs> Please stop your stream, right, I'm with <laughs> Or I might get death threats. <laughs> Actually, so I don't mind. I haven't had death threat for about a year now. So let's, let's go with that. Let's go with death threats. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know what else to um, to say to. I'm not listen. I'm not, not to try to convince you, but at the same time, I, I think we need to stay a bit more positive than this. Look, I, I, I get it. I haven't. Have you got the quotes from the? Yeah, the yeah. I, I'm, this is what I'm waiting to read. Uh... Yeah, because what I, what I saw right with um. Amoto, with with the the pre match, like you know when they interviewed him on OFC TV. Yeah, yeah. Right. He said he used the word details a lot. 
okay. that we need to pay attention to the details, whether there's small details. Like, and perhaps this is what he meant in terms of the work rate, in terms of defending in numbers, in terms of stopping ball watching, tracking the runners, details. But maybe that's what he meant. I don't know. Sorry, you were saying. No, I was gonna I was gonna read the 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 aspects in the Budu Yanik apply echo and minima damed the sick from Azisuroi Prodavola Helum and Angalo Promonidi and have an Angalo Promonidi and also have a center back of Soro Bears. The master Alio Madam is to make a rest as soon. File Gida Boris Navel Tiothis Osena Simeon Bujanji or the Rodi and Joe Afkada. Τα θέματα, όταν έχει ποδοσφαιριστέ του οποίου έκλεισε του που τον Ιούλι, τον Αύγουστο, και τώρα τον Δεκέμβρη, και ακόμα δεν έβραν τα πατήματα του ή προσφέραν που ελάχιστα, α πούμε, ή στην καλύτερη περίπτωση λίγο παραπάνω από το average, δεν είναι εύκολο να βρει παίχτε μέσα στην Ευρώπη και να του πείσει να έρθουν σε μια ομάδα που είναι εκτό. Πορεία τη Ευρώπη και να προσαρμοστούν. Δηλαδή, αν πιάσει έναν παιχνίδι τον Ιούλιο, και ευκίσου τον Οκτώβρη, no harm, no foul. Αν πιάσει έναν παιχνίδι 25 του Γενάρη, και παίξει ο Φκίσου ο Μάρτιν, δεν ξέρω. Είναι οι εξαιρέσει οι παίχτε που φκένουν. Και το Γενάρη είναι και σε αντικαταστήσει. Και όχι να προσθέσει βάθο. Και η ομόνια χρειάζεται και το βάθο και την ενισχύση, και μπορεί να γίνει. Με την έννοια που το λέω. Οπότε, προπονητή, πάλι, δεν ξέρω κατά πόσο μπορούμε, όχι μπορούμε, μπορούμε να αλλάξουμε να θέλουμε, αλλά δεν ξέρω πόσο βοηθά στην περίπτωση. Είναι ένα αρχή τεχνικό διευθυντή, ο οποίο θεωρώ ότι πλέον ξεκαθαρώ ότι έρχεται με ορίζοντα την επόμενη ή τι επόμενε σεζόν. Ούτε να αποφασίσει μπορεί τώρα για του παίχτε που είναι έρθουσοι, ούτε να αξιολογήσει την ομάδα γλίωρα για να μπορεί να φέρει άλλου. So, εν τω μεταξύ, λέω. Ωραία. Θα κάνω μια ερώτηση για αυτό το κομμάτι που θέλουμε έναν καλό προπονητή. Like, the guy has only been here five minutes, and I keep saying this: it's not his squad. It's not his squad. Right, and while people are going to say, "Well, the guy at Apple, well, he had the same, you know, he had the same squad as Sofroni, and they, they've improved," but we know that they've had less games to worry about. And sure, you can't argue that they've got a, that they've got a better squad, or they haven't got a better squad, because for me, they do. They do. They've got strength in numbers, and that's key. That's key, right? So if Donis gets injured, they, they can bring on I don't know Dongala. If um, I don't know, uh, Marquinhos gets injured, they got Dalcio. They got they got stronger replacements. But again, this comment is bang on the money. Half or more of these players, it's their third manager. Excuses for them are over, so they need to step up today. They showed improvement for sure. This is dead on the money. Dead on the money. Wallahi, well done. That is. Bang I on. mentioned I mentioned that on Total Green on Monday. As well, that is the third manager that uh, coaches them. But I, I also said it to not defend them. But at the same time, it's it's not very easy to understand. It's like you've got a different uh, boss at work, and everyone has a different opinion about how he wants you to to work as well. So, um, bro, there's also something that Gosta said on Total Green, which we said on our pod in terms of Lesiak defending. Yeah. In terms of the sh the shape of the the team when I scored the goal, the shape yeah. was brilliant. In terms of the two front men, the four men, we've done, we've done this dance already. Yeah. So um, you know, I like the fact that you guys are echoing what we say on this pod because yeah. maybe people will understand that we actually know a thing or two about this this fucking sport. But anyway, sorry, you were saying about this press conference because here there's, yeah. there's a comment about the press. I gone. Οκ, αναλυτικά. Είχαμε μία εξαιρετική αρχή, ένα ωραίο γκολ στα τρία λεπτά. Μετά είχαμε κάποιε δυνατότητε στην αντεπίθεση γιατί πήγαν μπροστά και είχαμε επιλογέ. Δεν κάναμε σωστέ επιλογέ, γι' αυτό έμεινε το 1-0. Δεν δεχθήκαμε μεγάλε ευκαιρίε. Στο δεύτερο ενίχρονο ξέραμε πω θα έβγαιναν περισσότεροι παίχτε του Απόλυτο μπροστά. Θέλαμε να το εκμεταλλευτούμε. Είχαμε προποθέσει, ευτυχώ χωράραμε το 2-0 και είμαι πολύ χαρούμενο με το παιχνίδι. Το πιο σημαντικό είναι ότι δείξαμε πως δεν είμαστε νεκροί. Μπορούμε να ανταγωνιστούμε. 
Σχετικά με την απόφαση να ξεκινήσει με Hooper and Sarifa στην επίθεση και αν ταιριάζει περισσότερο, μετά από μια νίκη θα ήταν εύκολο να πω ναι, αλλά πρέπει να το αναλύσουμε. Είχαμε περισσότερε επιλογέ από την προηγούμενη εβδομάδα. Μα βοήθησε το ότι παίξαμε έτσι στο να κρατήσουμε την μπάλα ανάμεσα στι γραμμέ του αντιπάλου. Θα δούμε για το μέλλον. Σήμερα δούλεψε. Ναι, φάνηκε ότι για σήμερα ήταν σωστή επιλογή. Αν αυτή η νίκη και η άνοδο στην πέμπτη θέση δίνει ψυχολογία και αν περίμενε τόσο αναποτελεσματικό τον Απόλλωνα, ναι, ελπίζουμε να μα βοηθήσει να πάρουμε όθηση. Την περασμένη εβδομάδα μετά την νίκη είχαμε καλή εμφάνιση, αλλά χάσαμε. Προσπαθούμε να παίρνουμε τα θετικά πράγματα για να μα δίνουν όθηση. Για τον Απόλλωνα περιμέναμε το 4-4-2, όπω έπαιξαν, αλλά στο β' μέρο ήρθε με αρκετού επιθυμητογενεί παίχτε. Μπορέσαμε να κρατήσουμε. Δεν δεχτήκαμε πολλέ ευκαιρίε, πήγαμε καλά ανασταλτικά. I, I, I will agree, and, and it's most of the things he said are things that we also mentioned before knowing what he was going to say. And uh, I think I'm not going to say for the first time uh, what he said seemed to be uh, a lot more logical in comparison to, to other times, but okay. Είπε ότι σήμερα δούλεψε κάτι, doesn't mean that something that works today is going to work next week. And obviously the, the result is what counts at the end of the day. Because with Ike we could have not lost the game, but it wasn't unfair that we had lost it. But the thing is you're playing with pressure every game. You know you, you can't afford to drop points. And this is another issue that Omonia has to deal with. But overall, okay, no, no surprises yeah, but, in. Yeah, bro, no disrespect here, yeah, right? But this isn't Paralimni, this isn't Doxa, this isn't Akrita, this isn't Olympiakos. No, this is one of, if not the biggest clubs in the league. Yeah, so there's there has to be pressure. There has to be. But yeah. when when there's pressure, you see which players have got the bollocks to step yeah. up when need be. This is what I'm saying. If you want to be elite, listen, this isn't a Premier League club. This isn't a Champions League club. I get it, right? So the pressure isn't going to be as intense. But at the same time, if you want to be successful, you need to have players with the right attitude, with the right mentality, okay? We can't have this, oh, well, you know, we, we've got to really like lay off them a little bit. Okay, you can lay off them when they've played well and you've seen that they've done something for you to believe that, all right, we lost the game, but it was the fine margins, okay? Yeah. But then when you see unacceptable decision-making, whether it be in goal, back four, midfield, whatever, it makes you think, well, is there enough pressure or is there too much pressure that they cannot... Um, Handle. They cannot, yeah, do you know what I mean? And yeah. look, I understand the, the, the culture more in Cyprus now since we've been doing these podcasts, I understand that fans are going to be unhappy even if there is a victory. Yeah, I, I've seen it, but it happens everywhere in football. Us United fans, Liverpool fans, they'll win. It's like, well, we didn't play well. But for me, I don't give a fuck if you don't play well and you win the game. I don't care. I, I really don't care. As long as it doesn't become habitual. So it doesn't become a habit. Do you Bravo. know what I mean? That it's like, okay, well, you know, we, we got away with it this week. We didn't get away with it today. We didn't get away with it because, all right, I, I agree, Apollon weren't great. They're not a great team. They didn't give us enough problems, especially first half. But the fact is, we've won the game, which is what we wanted. We just move on. We move on. It's the job of the coach is to absorb the, play, the pressure. Well, yeah, there's that. But at the same time, the job of the coach is to motivate them and to play to their strengths. And I think today was the first time this coach has played to our players' strengths. That being said... I still don't believe he knows his best 11. Yeah, Mosh, that, that's, that's for sure. Now, I'm not saying it's pick 11, inshallah. I'm not saying that for a second. No. But at the same time, it goes back to what I've been saying for weeks on end. Once he's got a couple of windows out the way, if they back him, because someone said to me last week that I, was, I hit the nail right on the head with what I said, the, the, um, it's the people above that are going to fail him. Okay, the, the players will fail him, but not as much as the people above, because I'm sure he knows which players he, he, he doesn't want anymore. And I'm sure he's got a rough idea of the type of player that he wants to bring in. If they fail him, like they failed Bergen and uh, Lennon in the transfer window, then the guy's got no fucking chance. 
They've got no chance. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. The truth is he, he, he in key games, like especially the game against Dubwell, uh, less the game with Aris and uh, more recently the game with Ajax, he, he, those were games that he had the chance to gain a lot more fans and he didn't. And then in the press conference, some of the things he said, you know... Thank you. Nah, the sound bites. The sound bites, yeah. Yeah, he didn't do himself any favours. So there's... There's a lot. There's a lot of people that you know. He didn't convince. Let's let's put it this way. He didn't convince a lot of Omonia fans. Even though some people say that, like us as a pod, it's not his fault that he he inherited a team with so many problems. Uh, not just uh, Agonistica, but uh, at the same time, no, no identity, psychology, discipline, all these things. But the thing is, do you think he has done enough to be the one to lead us in the next year? This is the question. Because for me, I wouldn't mind leaving him till the summer. For me, there's no there's no question about him staying till the summer. I want to I, I want to see him stay till the summer. But I, at the same time, I want to see improvement. I want to see stability. I want to see intensity. I want to see character. I want to see identity. Uh, I want to see other things. So, you know, he'll convince me that with him and with the right people around him and the players, he can... Uh, All right, let me ask you something. I'm not, con yeah. I'm not convinced yet, but at the same time, it's it's unfair to blame him equally with others who have been there before him, if it makes well, sense. Th this is what I want to ask you, right? He has had the same, roughly the same amount of time as Lennon this season. Not in yeah. general, but this season, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly the same squad. Okay. Perhaps with more injuries. Perhaps. Perhaps. But again, that's arguable because he hasn't had Fabi for, for God knows how long. Yeah. Right? So... Has he done better than Lennon this season? The question is, has he done better than Lennon last season when he took... No, 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 no. This, this season, this season. I'm talking about this season. Yeah, but I, I'm saying that I'm comparing Ferreira this season to, to Lennon last season. Because no, you can't. You can't. Similarly, no, you can't. what I'm saying is... Lennon came in the middle of the season without him having a choice of bringing in any players. He similarly inherited a team that wasn't doing well. The psychology wasn't there. The identity wasn't there. They seemed to be but what the was the target? players. What and was the target? He, he was there to... ...na axiologisi din omada, do epipedon, na activisi do gibello, και καταφέραν του. Ο, ο Φερέρα τώρα πάλε παραλαμβάνει μια ομάδα χωρίς να εγγύνος που την έκτισε. Εγώ, εγώ τον που λέω ότι ο Λένον should have done better because contrary to last season when he took over he had the chance to take them to pre-season. He had the opportunity to bring in some players. Now whether or not he brought the players he wanted to I don't know. Obviously, there's some players that he chose. Others, I'm not that sure. But I don't know whether I, I, I don't I don't want to believe that he didn't agree with with the players that were were there. You know, yeah, maybe it I, wasn't I, his, his choice. But for example, they told him, "Oh, we've got this option here. Do you agree?" And he say, "Yeah, I don't mind." You know. So this is what I'm comparing. Well, this is what I'm saying about Ferreira. Well, yeah. Put this way, right. the way I see it is that I'm, I'm not comparing Ferreira to Lennon when he came because it was a completely different squad. Completely different squad. You know, we had more experienced players. We had more leaders. Right? Um, and, and we didn't have uh, a group of players that, okay, they, they, a lot of them were, in fact, most of them were title winners. 
but they didn't have the experience of only having one trophy to play for because the pressure was off in the league. Let's yeah. get it right. Again, no disrespect, Bayek, Olympiagos, okay, Ayel, Ayel were probably the strongest team in that in that Group B. So all you had to do was focus on the, on the Gibbon law. That's all it was. Yeah. All right, okay, fair enough. He, he had to motivate the squad, but let's get it right. This is a guy who, as many people were telling me, he won numerous titles in Scotland. He was a winner. He won so many titles. He beat Barcelona with Celtic. He beat Lazio with Celtic. This is what people were telling me. And I was saying, watch out for this brother. Watch out for him. Because I remember going to Edinburgh and getting in a cab and talking to the taxi driver who was telling me that he was picking up Lennon when Lennon was living in, in Edinburgh, picking him up drunk. Man was being sick in the fucking cab, all that kind of shit. Taxi driver's gossip, bruv. Yeah? So when I get on this pod and I'm saying, I don't trust this, I don't believe in it, but I'm going to stick to him because that's the right thing to do. It's the same with this coach. This coach has come in and people were shitting on him because he hasn't got a CV, he hasn't done this. And yeah, there's a comment saying here, you know, he's done a lot better. He'll always be remembered by that 4-0. If we've got a nil-nil draw against ifs, buts and maybes again, hypothetically, if we held out for a nil-nil against a boy with 10 men, he'd have been a fucking saviour. They'd have been doing fucking, uh, what's it called? Photo shots with a halo above his head. That is, so, is it. And as I yeah, said... That's what I'm the, saying. The, the games where he had the opportunity to show something, he didn't. But I, I get it. I get it. But, you know, <laughs> all right. The the Ike game was an abomination. The Abo game was an abomination. And yeah, he didn't do himself favours by saying, yeah, we come into this game with good form because we beat Olympia Goz and we beat... Paralimni or whoever we fucking be, Agrida. I get it. But, all right, like, he's got a squad that isn't his. He's still getting to know the players. He's still trying to understand the politics and the bullshit that goes on in Cyprus. Yeah? What annoyed me, right, again, uh, about what he said the other day in, uh, with the interview with, with uh, OCTV, is that he was still complaining about the second goal that Lesex got smashed. And I'm saying that it was a 50-50 challenge and Lesex bottled it. Yeah. Yeah, but the fact is, what has he really done wrong for people to get on his fucking back? What has he really done wrong? Because for mm. me, based on today, they played with more intensity. They worked harder, again, given, but we didn't see that a lot, apart from Man United away. Players were stepping up. We were, we were making the most of our opportunities. And... I repeat, because it's not like a fucking broken record or, or a broken iPod or whatever kids use these days, MP3 players or Spotify, broken Spotify. If he isn't backed by the powers that be, the greater power, the man in Chicago is sitting in his chair doing Zoom calls every fucking day. How's everyone doing? How you doing, in New mate? York. In New York, sorry, sorry. Well, is he buying the Chicago bank or some shit? Oh, fuck knows what he's doing. Fuck knows what he's doing. You know, we're talking to his mate at TechLink or he's talking to his brother in the, the chief scout in section. The, the chief scout that sits on the, in the dugout. Maybe that's a question that you should ask him from me. Why the fuck are you in the dugout if you're the chief scout? Why are you in the, in the stands? Anyway, whatever. But this is what I'm saying. Like, you cannot shit on the guy for what he's done when we're sitting fifth at the moment, which is better than what it was when the last guy was there, Right. When he's playing with a deck of cards that no one, you know, he hasn't chosen these cards. He hasn't, these are players that he's having to work with. Hmm. And look, we ask, why isn't this one playing? Why isn't that one playing? There's got to be a reason why this one and that one isn't playing. It's got to be a reason. Someone told me the other day that he, someone saw Mix at the mall the day after the, which game was it? When he was apparently sick. So apparently he's leaving. That's what people were saying. Someone's saying to me that, you know, Pano's not happy for whatever reason and he's arguing and all oh, these paramithia, man, it, it don't help. Yeah. But it's it's no coincidence that when the team is doing bad, you hear rumours of this and that and this one is doing this with that one's wife and that one is doing this and it's no so it's no coincidence. Look at Anorthosi. Look at the bullshit that we're hearing from Anorthosi now. Yeah. It's not Bulaydi, it's, it's uh, Hambulla, it's Vada with this player's wife and this kind of shit. Like... You know, when the shit hits the fan, like it, the holes dug deeper, dug deeper. But when everything's cool, there's no problem. I mean, look at Buffer. They're like the Simpsons. Last year and the year before, 
Look at them now. No one talks about them. No one talks mm. about Abuel. No one talks about their debts or the alleged debts because they're riding high. But when things ain't going well, bomba. There you go. Chill out, so go and have a Uzini. Re, re, push the Malaga. Listen, right? This guy is learning Greek slowly, slowly. So I want you to speak Greek, Rod. Come on. In the Rodri, but this is more exit, no evening, Rod. Evening. Well, <laughs> uh, Anyway, should we wrap it up, man? We've done over an hour and five minutes. Um, well, if he loses again against Abu, they will not sack him. Well, it depends on where we are in the league. <laughs> when do we play up or next anyway? When do we play them next? Hang on, let me bring up the fixtures. Our next game, our, our game against them ain't until apparently the 25th of Feb. That's the day after my daughter's birthday. We're gonna win that. Um, so it's it's the second from last game of the season. It's the second from last game before the league splits. Mm. So you know, okay, so where where are we now? We must have empty, yeah. Nah. Same points as Abolon, uh, but Abolon's got a game in hand. Right, we're, we're seven seven points behind Aris, and we're nine behind Bafo. Yeah? Our next three fixtures are, ladies and gentlemen, Baralimni, Doxa, and Ael. Then we've got Salamina. Now, I'm not going to sit on this fucking throne and, and, and get all excited, but... These are four winnable games. Imagine if we win the, our next four games. Imagine. Imagine. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but just imagine if we win our next four games. A lot happens in Cyprus, bruv. A lot happens. She will. Hey, look, Rodri, Bale's bailed out yet? <laughs> Oh, God almighty. Cheers, Jason. Appreciate it, mate. Oh, mm. come on. <laughs> come bring that one up. <laughs> nah. Anyway. Well, bro, listen, before before we wrap it up, we did a, a giveaway last week for the, the coasters. Yeah. Which was brilliant. We did the giveaway for the No Choftes Fandela and Mario... Mario won that one, so I need to get that one printed. Shall we do one more No Chof This Vanilla giveaway before um, before Christmas? Yeah, uh, why not? After anyway, when's the next game? Per what date? The next game is uh, 2nd of Jan. 2nd of January, okay. But I limni away. The so return of Rusha or Ian Rusha. <laughs> <laughs> so the giveaway we're going to give away a no chuff this t-shirt Roy do you want to stand up you don't have to model it like you did last time but you can show him the fuck under Robbie t-shirt there you go there you go we do it in we, we have it in black as well for yeah. our viewers and I think we need to make it a, a fun question live on air what do you reckon no go ahead you're, you're the fun oh, guy man oh come on now <laughs> come on now all right okay so the question, this this one, okay, this is going to be a tricky one, okay? Now, I don't know what the tradition is like in Cyprus when it comes to Christmas dinner with the Goyenia. Do you guys have Galo Bulla? What would you guys have? Christmas? No. Uh, yeah. New, yeah. New Year's. It's in the It's in the It's in the so that's standard. That's standard for Cyprus, yeah? Mm. But what I want for people watching, because we've got 88 people watching live on YouTube. So again, thanks everyone. But don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your nunna. What I want you guys to do in the live chat is tell me the most random item of, oh, shit, so the most random thing that's ever been on the Trapezi Christmas time, you know? Like, I don't know, you guys don't have Yorkshire puddings, Yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys that, but is, is there something random like beetroot jelly like they have in Northern Ireland? Because <laughs> they do that. Beetroot jelly and, and carrot jelly and, yeah, George has gone Yorkshire pudding. I'm not giving you that because you studied in England. That don't count, bro. That don't count. So I'm not having that. I'm not having that. What's the most random thing that you guys have had on the dinner table? Come on. Roy, I'll let you, I'll let you put the, uh, the, the answers up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type up the email address for the winner. 
Ne, Dorana, Dorana a favor. Muito, muito. É, primeiro a Bandisis, é, é Thor a Bandisis. No one has the, random things in Cyprus. Maybe there's there's sheep's testicles that, you know, it's quite a delicacy. Don't count. Don't count. Sorry, doesn't count. <laughs> Wagyu sushi rolls. Fucking Ooh. hell. Man. Where does this guy live, man? <laughs> like, he, he's living in a fucking Sheraton, fucking the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> man, he's a wagamamas. Best stuff. He's a yen. He's in there. Ostora Robizoda. Wagyu sushi rolls from Alex. Yeah, so far, so far. Oh. Dear, my dear. <laughs> dear, fuck off. I'm not having that. Kolokuzka <laughs> next. Karaolus, Kolokuzka me afka. Ya le to. Roy, na butro de me me na na bu de. Ele katalava. Extra lash. O Costadino se li efta for es extra lash. We can arrange that. Avrio na pieso si e fine e un po' raro te ero di si studenta pandani un po' raro l'ex vuole fine. Yanni has been on you all night man. He, he, want, he wants answers. Yeah. <laughs> Bro listen for, for the benefit of those viewing right. Roy, yeah, Roy, yeah. Roy's going to ask questions right to Darabuluzi and I hope that Darabuluzi doesn't turn out being like Kate McCann in court, not wanting to answer 90 odd questions about her missing daughter. But anyway, so what are we, what are we going with so far? I think the uh, the, 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 su the Wagyu sushi rolls, man. If he's... You're disqualified. You're disqualified. You're lucky I haven't banned you, right? But I'll let you off because you didn't put down fucking Drahana. That is vile. Disgusting. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. I think Alex is the winner, man. Wagyu sushi rolls. But he he has to tell us that is is he being honest? Where do you live, is, Alex? Is he where, making where shit live, up? Alex? You know, is he making well, shit I, up? I believe it. I believe it because maybe maybe Alex has has um has uh, had Christmas dinner at a uh, an Asian person's home. Maybe his missus is from that part of the world, and maybe that's what they have. Maybe he was uh, ah. I know what it is. He has to tell us why she paid for it as well. No, 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 no. This is this is a technicality. This is a technicality. I've worked it out. I've worked, hear me out. Christmas Eve, he's gone out on the piss, right? He's gone out on a night out, got absolutely levered, walked out of a nightclub, and he stumbled across a, a Chinese takeaway shop that was open Christmas Eve. And he walked in there like two o'clock in the morning. So it was technically Christmas Day. Alex, I'm all right. Come on. <laughs> Fucking Alex, hell. you've done it. You've done it, haven't you? You've done it. Did you puke in your shoe like I did one year? I'm just saying, it happens. Hey, you can't go out fucking on a pisser and have wagyu sushi rolls, man. You have a fucking <clears throat> dodgy euro or whatever. I don't know, dodgy food. That's because submarine makes extra mayonnaise. Yeah, but maybe, like maybe he went out in Chinatown if he's from London. Wagyu Come on, Alex, sushi. where are you from? Wagyu is Japanese. Wagyu is Japanese. And it's well, fucking expensive, man. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, that, fish, curry, moesi. Fish, curry, moesi. What kind of fish? Cod. It's not worth high spoon, though. That fish. Yeah, but you know what? You lot eat the fucking head of a uh, fish as well, man. I, I can't do that. If you're in the room, bro, man. No, 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 no. Eating on an eyeball? Are you mad? Yeah, man. It can leave it to the jaywara. Testicles, are we talking about? <laughs> oh man, nah. I see. I don't. I don't mind fish. The smell of fish ain't too bad either. Although some people don't clean up properly. It's um, tomorrow the pot with ammonia. I know it's the total green. Eh? I'm. I'm still waiting for Alex. I want it. Here we go. No man, my brother ordered the whole. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you get these from? 
Oh, did you have them in the freezer? Did you buy them from Alpha Mega and then put them in the freezer? Like, see, it's not going to be like, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, And actually, Alex, well, look, I don't know if you're on Instagram or if you're on social media, but email us your your details and then we'll get that T-shirt made up for you. It will be at the T-shirt shop, so you'll have to go to collect it, unfortunately, because we haven't got a delivery service. But, um, yeah, you've won. You've won the uh, the Christmas quiz. It's all right, man. I think we, we get more... Uh, what does this fucking guy want? Yeah, what does he boss. want? Oh, Dimi, you want to what does he want? Go away, fake DJ. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. Ah, you'll DM me on, on IG. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always I've got lemony. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone tells you it's Trahana, you push him off a cliff. You take him to the top with Drodders. What's it called? Not Drodders, a mountain. You take him to fucking, uh, what's it called? No, 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 no. Stelion, I'm not having this, bruv. I'm not, we share the same name. I'm not having this. Yeah, you take him to uh, what's it called, uh, Petra Duro Mule, and you push him off the cliff. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what you do. Anyway, an hour and 15 minutes, Roy. We've yeah. done well, we've done very, very well. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, yeah, for um, yeah. thank you guys for contributing. It's been brilliant. And again, this is our last pod of 2022. Wait, no, 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 it's not. Boys and girls, I for completely forgot. Well, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I forgot to tell you guys this. We had a special guest planned for today's pod. Unfortunately, he could not make it. But I had a conversation with him today and we have penciled in. So again, things might change. But on the 28th of this month, there is a strong possibility that Vito Gomez will be no Choftes. There you go. Vito Gomez has been preliminary booked for the 28th of December. I haven't got time yet. Again, it's still, you know. It's going to happen. Know. Yeah. But it, no, I'm hoping it's going to happen. Know. I'm hoping it's going to happen. But uh, mm. so Vito Gomez is going to be our, our last guest for 2022. And I'm so fucking buzzing. And thank you to Kiko for helping us out to get this one because Kiko's. You know, we love him to bits and he's still yeah. um, looking after us as well and he still tunes in and everything. So, and, and plus, uh, uh, one last thing, on the 26th of December is my birthday. So for anyone watching who wants to send me a present, you don't have to, but thanks a lot. <laughs> Roy accepts dick pics. <laughs> no. <laughs> no! That's, that, that's Chris. <laughs> Yeah, I, actually, I, you know, I, we should have got. You know, we should have got for Christmas a personalized USB, USB but in the yeah. shape, of, the shape of a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, right, come on, wrap it up, my friend. Put a little bow on it. Nax, Dolly Bon. Kopozi va mestarhin pan tap kev khais to nami lumen me zabuniki dem bori niki simeri ni να αλλάξει τη γενικότερη εικόνα τη ομάδα, τουλάχιστον αν δεν υπάρχει συνέχεια και σταθερότητα. Ε, υπήρχε βελτίωση σε κάποιου τομεί, ήταν να βγάλει μια αντίδραση. Θα συμφωνήσω με τον προπονητή ότι έδειξαν το αστό, είμαστε πεθαμένοι. Ε, αλλά από εκεί και πέρα χρειάζεται πάρα πολύ δουλειά. Δεν μπορεί μια νίκη να αλλάξει τη γενικότερη εικόνα την οποία έχουμε και τι ανησυχίε και του προβληματισμού. Ε, από εκεί και πέρα κρατούμε την νίκη μέχρι το επόμενο παιχνίδι που θα είναι αρχές του Γενάρη και μέχρι τότε ελπίζω να περνάτε όλοι καλά, να περάσετε καλά τις γιορτές σας, με την οικογένεια σας, τα Χριστούγεννα σας. Ε, για μένα όσοι θέλετε να με δείτε αύριο στο Total Green, ελπίζω όπως είπαμε να είστε σίγουροι ότι οι ερωτήσεις είναι να ρωτηθούν. Το θέμα είναι οι απαντήσεις που θα παρτούν ε, και θα είναι αυτές. After a guy, mm-hmm. che... Before you do it, Never go okay, ahead. He's, he's done it. Before you do it, what I will say again, thank you everyone for your support from the beginning or people that just started watching or, or whoever's been watching. Thank you. It's been a, an emotional year for us, a very emotional year. We had obviously the, the managerial change, winning the cup, Manchester, everything. It's It's been 
incredible. And without you guys, we haven't been, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this. We wouldn't do it. Uh, yeah. So you guys give us the motivation to do this. We thank you for your support, all the Instagram follows, all the comments, everything. Um, you know, it, I try to be jovial. Roy tries to have fun with this. And yeah, we do go off on a tangent sometimes. And um, we do go against the grain. And we do say things that perhaps people don't like. And look, we love doing this. And we've had so many people in the past saying, oh, you're only doing things for clicks and all that kind of shit. We don't. We genuinely love doing this pod. We don't care if we have 1,990 subs, 10 away from 2,000. <laughs> we, we enjoy it, but we, we enjoy it even more when you guys interact and you guys join in with it. And we see this as a little family, as a little barrier. And um, that's, again, yeah, huh? that's what I was going to I was going to add to that, that uh, no disrespect to other Omonia related groups or whatever, but it's the less toxic, and, and I, I think this is what you said. We, we are a small family, and, and we get to, even though we haven't met with the people, you feel like you know them a little bit, yeah. you know, because, yeah. you know, so it's yeah. it's really nice, man. It's really nice to have you, Pragmatica. Thanks a lot for exactly. the support since day dot. Enjoy your holidays, enjoy it with your family. Me tus filus sasmos agamianus oti kalitro naeshede. Of course, and, and, and enjoy, enjoy your Christmas. Enjoy it. Be responsible. You know, I said this last year, and I, I think people listen to me, but don't don't drink and drive. Don't do anything stupid. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's that time of year where you spend it with your family. And look, I'm ending the year with a funeral, unfortunately, uh, but I'm not going to go into that. But at the same time, like you need to value the people that you hold close to you. And I don't mean to get all like mushy and whatever but don't take people for granted don't take your family for granted don't take your friends for granted i know it's that time of year where everyone wants to spend it with their family and it's all you know nostalgic and obviously talk about it. but at the same time like january february march april may whatever all the way throughout the year don't take people for granted don't take your family for granted your friends um and just enjoy life yeah so uh, have a lovely christmas boys and girls um i hope santa gets you whatever you want and uh, I hope he doesn't empty his sack on you. Just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> <Right there. laughs>